Due to excessive global pollution, mainly from the manufacturing and automobile sectors, 196 countries became signatories to the 2015 Paris Agreement at COP21, agreeing to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. To meet these goals, global carbon dioxide emissions need to be reduced by 45% by 2030 from 2010 levels and reach net zero emissions by 2050, prompting a turning point for the automobile sector. We are not cutting off even uh, fossil fuel immediately. We are still using it as we are discovering this. We replace, that's why people are talking 2040, 2050, in order to get all the solutions solved using cleaner sources of energy. Chira Motors unveiled their first electric vehicle prototype in 2011, followed by its hybrid predecessor in 2014, tailored for the African market. I'm cruising the Kira EV. Yeah? Uh, this is ours. <laughs> they also ventured into manufacturing electric buses. However, a new excitement arose last year when foreign companies Nissan and Toyota launched their first electric cars on the Ugandan market. At first glance, this fully electric Nissan Aria looks similar to its petrol counterparts until you raise its bonnet. You charge from here, the power goes in. It's re you know our power is not really stable and we don't want to waste the batteries. How much does a car like this go for now in Uganda? This car here is uh, 57,000 US dollars and uh, the other big one is uh, 98,000 US dollars. Amounting in Uganda shillings like how much? About 215. Most electric cars today can travel over 200 kilometers before needing a charge. But questions about their sustainability and affordability arise due to their price and electric nature. What we are trying to talk and what we are influencing as engineers is to tell government you are distributing power, but you need to empower the local person so that he has capacity to pay for that unit. And they are, there is a need also to reduce on the cost of production of that power and the cost of sale of that unit. So it's the government that needs to come in. 2023 had been projected to be the year that electric vehicles take off globally. However, in sub-Saharan Africa, more so countries like Uganda, the challenge of the high cost of these vehicles and the wanting road infrastructure still hinders the growth and takeoff of this sector. Based on experience, Zembo, a pioneer in the electric border border motorcycle subsector since 2019, aims to produce over 12,800 electric motorcycles, replacing imported petrol ones. Uh, because it requires big investment. We estimate completely converting uh, the Boda Boda industry to electric based on our monthly imports of around 12,000 motorcycles petrol per month. Replacing those with electric and building the infrastructure to go with it would be about $40 million USD dollars, uh, per month of investment. So someone has to finance that. Uh, and I, so I see a big opportunity for the financial sector as well to support us uh, who are doing the work of actually building things and installing things. Chira EV is already setting up infrastructure that most players are likely to replicate. This fast charging station converts that AC power into DC power and then we use that DC to charge the battery of the bus because uh, the, bus, the bus uses a battery and batteries use DC power. However, one may wonder why the informal but skilled fabricators in Uganda are not prominently involved in this revolutionary electric vehicle journey. Each automobile industry will create over 100 different industries that feed into that. And we have already started at the university to make sure that the engineers understand uh, this, but also at Katue and at Independence we launched our first vehicle, which is a blend of this because they have something they know, but they need engineering. To, to bring it together. They have the hands-on, which is lacking in the universities, and they, you, then they, but they don't have the engineering. The electric vehicle subsector holds promise not only for reducing dependence on fossil fuels, but also for stimulating economic growth and fostering environmental stewardship. Wadulo Makanold for UBC Business.